The only way to fix AAA gaming is for consumers to alter their spending habits. In this video, I'm going to touch upon how and why only consumers can correct the course of AAA gaming. To reiterate, we live within a capitalist system. Production is undertaken in order to generate profit, in order to accumulate money. So products aren't manufactured to fulfill social needs. They're not manufactured for any other reason than to generate a return for investors. So the only way to change the products, the commodities that these media corporations produce is to change your spending habits. And obviously individuals don't count. Okay, so one or two people changing their spending habits won't change anything. There has to be a massive change in where money is directed. The continued production of a commodity is contingent upon its profitability. Once a commodity is no longer profitable, it won't be produced. Just look at VHS tapes, VCRs, cassette tapes, crystal radios, and so on. All kinds of products that used to be extremely common are now falling by the wayside because they're not nearly as profitable to produce. That's what needs to happen with gaming if it's going to return to its prior state if we're going to get games that are similar to older games which is what most people allegedly want then we're going to have to alter the spending habits of the majority of gamers people can be upset about greed or anything else they want to refer to this as all they like but the fact is is that bethesda makes a profit when they release skyrim five separate times because well they they do that's evidenced by the fact that they continue to do it. Um, if it weren't profitable, they wouldn't be wasting their time releasing the same game multiple times. So complaining about a corporation doesn't accomplish anything. Okay, corporations aren't controlling people's minds and forcing them to buy products. People are of their own free will purchasing these products. So consumer habits have to change in order for there to be a change in production. Simply complaining about producers of commodities accomplishes nothing. It's like complaining about drug dealers, okay? Yeah, okay, let's say every drug dealer on Earth disappeared tomorrow. New ones would take their place because the demand is still there for the product. It's that way with any product. Let's say, uh, let's say every TV manufacturer went out of business tomorrow. There'd be a thousand new manufacturers in business the next day because there's still the demand for TVs. And it's that way with any commodity. So, so long as the demand is there for, you know, new editions of Skyrim and all these uh, games people complain about, then they will continue to be produced. If people really want to see change in the game industry, they need to convince others to stop purchasing these newer games that they despise. We need to show younger gamers in what respects older games are superior to newer games instead of simply uh, decrying newer games. Okay, as I said in my previous video on game quality, simply espousing your disdain for a game doesn't communicate anything of value to anyone, especially to people who are ignorant of the media to which you're comparing this new game or new movie or whatever, you know? Like I said, if I say that this new game sucks compared to this old game, and I'm talking to people who've never played this old game or never even seen footage of it, then they're not going to have any clue what I'm talking about. Unless I get into the specifics, which is what people need to do when they're trying to communicate the issues with new games, when they're talking about what's missing compared to old games. Change almost never happens from the top down. It's always from the bottom up. There needs to be a change in consumer spending habits in order to change the games that are produced. Now, there is a reciprocal relationship between commodities and the consumer. Commodities do shape the spending habits of consumers, but ultimately the responsibility for what gets produced does in fact lie with the consumer. So yes, new commodities that come out do produce new desires in consumers. Obviously when TVs came out, they were a brand new thing. No one had ever had a TV. No one had ever had any desire for a TV. Everyone wanted them shortly after they came out because they saw how nice they were to own. So yes, new commodities do create new desires, but the consumers are responsible for managing their own spending. If everyone decided 80 years ago, you know what, we're not going to buy any TVs, then they wouldn't have been produced to nearly the same extent. And it's the same way with any commodity. If we want these games that we're complaining about to disappear, we need to convince other people to quit spending money on them. And we need to do so in a well-argued, well well-rationalized way. 
because ultimately it is the spending of consumers that informs companies and corporations as to what they need to produce to continue generating a profit to their shareholders. Every dollar you spend communicates something to a corporation. Also, I want to take this time to address some of the criticisms that I received in response to my video upon greed. People didn't understand my video upon greed. For some reason, some people seem to believe that I'm defending greed or capitalism, which couldn't be further from the truth. Is a doctor defending a tumor if they tell you about the interactions that a tumor is having with your other organs? Is a meteorologist defending tornadoes when they tell you that an unavoidable tornado is going to rip through your neighborhood? Okay, what I was attempting to convey with that video is that complaining about greed within capitalism is akin to complaining about the saltiness of the water you've collected within your hands as you're adrift at sea. Talking about ameliorating the greed of media corporations is akin to talking about purifying the salt water within your hand as you're floating in the midst of the ocean. It's not possible. It isn't possible to eliminate greed within capitalism. Complaining about the greediness of any particular industry or corporation is an indication that you're missing the source of the problem with which to start. Profit motive in production cannot be eliminated until capitalism is superseded, as the profit motive is the entire basis for production within capitalism. Complaining about and treating the symptoms of an ailment is pointless and ridiculous if you've no intention of eliminating the ailment altogether, as the symptoms will recur. Going to get a bit philosophical here, a bit uh, psychological, but a lot of people, myself included in the past, have a really negative and self-destructive tendency to ignorantly dismiss arguments. So they don't actually familiarize themselves with the arguments that they're dismissing, but they reject them out of hand. For instance, many people reject the economic arguments of Marx because of the prejudiced preconception they have of said arguments. So they don't actually know what Marx's arguments are are, but because of what they imagine those arguments to be, they reject Marx altogether. And it's the same way with young earth creationists and evolutionary theory. They don't actually know what the arguments and facts are in favor of evolutionary theory, but they reject it out of hand because of what they imagine those arguments to be and because of what they imagine those facts to be. I imagine that a large portion of the people who disliked and posted negative comments upon my first video upon greed, they didn't actually watch the entire video. They imagine what I'm saying. They think that they know what the video is going to be about from maybe two minutes of it, and then they have a negative reaction to it, and then they write the entire video off altogether without actually familiarizing themselves with my argument within that video. And that's just uh, a very common, very negative, self-destructive human trait, and it's unfortunate.